I just want to say to everyone in the room uh, that uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, this is my passion, uh, living donation, and uh, I'm going to give you just a very quick personal reflection because uh, I was an intern at uh, Toronto Western Hospital in 1977. And uh, I was incredibly fortunate to work uh, with uh, Dr. Carl Cardella, who was the, uh, was the director of the kidney transplant program here at, uh, at Toronto Western Hospital. It was not yet at Toronto General Hospital as an intern. And uh, Carl took me under his wing and uh, encouraged me to pursue a career in transplantation. And um, one of the first things that I discovered was that people were actually donating kidneys to living people were, were donating kidneys to mostly in those days friends. And this is something which was, uh, I, you know, uh, just uh, I had no, no, no perspective. And I was just so moved and so, so uh, touched by, by, by this, uh, this idea that it became, you know, it became for me the reason I th that, that I wanted to do this. And then I was incredibly fortunate that uh, I was offered a position in Vancouver in 1984, and I came to British Columbia, and there was no living donation in British Columbia. Uh, the idea was that living donation was not ethical because we were doing harm to people who didn't know what we were doing to them and it wasn't right. And I just came with a, a completely different approach and over the years, I've done my best to try and impact that in British Columbia and change the culture. And so I'm at uh, St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. And I need to figure out how to do this. I'm also not, I'm also not doing a great job of this. I'm technologically challenged. So, uh, you know, so we have a, uh, what people would say would be a successful living donor transplant program uh, at, uh, at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. And uh, just reflecting on success, you know, people, if you talk to patients, patients will tell you that I was transplanted at the best transplant program in the, the country, the world, wherever, and you know, they're right. Where you got your transplant is the best transplant program that for you ever, anywhere. And my goal is to make every transplant program the best transplant program, just, just to, to get living donation offered across the country uh, in, in an equitable way so that everybody has access to the living donor transplant program. So everybody's going to be transplanted the best transplant program in the country. Uh, but some of the things that we have in BC, which have helped us, I think, you know, uh, be, be as successful as we've been, but we can do a lot better, are first of all, we worked with the, you know, with the government to, in the Ministry of Health, to develop an activity-based funding model. And having a funding model where we're not reliant on necessarily the global budget of a hospital, but rather for every living donor that comes forward, you get X amount of money to begin the workup. If they get to this point, then you get Y amount of money, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly for recipients, every step of the way, there's money attached to that particular activity. And therefore, the hospital can afford to do this work, not having to make a priority judgment, which is more important, because we're not no longer competing with the orthopedic department or another department in terms, in terms of resources. Um, I've worked very hard, I think, at our hospital to develop a culture which supports organ donation, uh, which supports living donation, and it really is the culture of the hospital which makes a difference. I mean, we have some some resources available to us at our hospital which aren't the case everywhere else. When I talk to my my colleagues across the country, one of the big issues is getting operating rooms, for example. Well, you know, sure, there, 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 there is balances, but our hospital has realized that living donor transplant is an operation which is in many ways, uh, people would say, maybe the best operation you can do. Uh, it, 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 you know, in terms of the impact that it has on people, the, the, the way that it helps the healthcare system, it helps the patient, it helps the donor. Um, and so our hospital has made a commitment to support limited donation. So if we have a donor and a recipient that need a transplant, we'll get the operating room done. Um, talked a little bit about the path. 
So it's a tough journey. It's a rough road to be a donor, and you've got to be really committed. We have, we're doing our best to try and streamline that procedure to have some realistic time targets to make it so that if you want to go through this quickly, you can go through this quickly. Uh, one of the questions I saw asked is, and one of, I think one of the reasons for success is that we will work up multiple donors at the time, because our experience as well, it's five to one. So for f every five people that begin the, the, the workup, only one person actually gets through. So in order to try and expedite transplant for the, for the recipient, we'll work up multiple donors at the same time. Because of our activity funding model, we have adequate staff. And so our staff will say we're stretched, we're overworked, but at least if we see, if we get more donors, if we get more recipients, we can get more staff. So we're doing reasonably well that way. Um, been very important to have a social worker who it works with patients and their families to help them develop tools to talk to their to their community, be it their, their friends, their family, or the, their church group, or whatever, about donor outreach. So a social worker whose major focus with, with, with the recipient is working with them to help identify donors, um, giving them then tools for donor outreach. And uh, we haven't talked really about kidney pair donation program, but you, well, you, you heard a little bit about the, the, the first uh, kidney pair, or the liver pair donation today. So kidney pair donation is a program wherein there is a, a donor and a recipient who are incompatible, but the donor is, is, uh, is worked up and willing and able to donate, then you could create a chain where this person then donates to this person and in return this person donates to this person. And that's been a, that's been a large success for us. So we, we've been able to do an awful lot of transplants by, in, by uh, putting, investing in, uh, in the KPD program. Uh, we have a very strong um, nurse leader whose job is to make this all happen. <laughs> and so, I, you know, you put the resources together, but, you know, we, we need operating time. We need to get everything done, done in a timely way. We have somebody whose job it is just to, to, to oversee that. And then what I'm going to talk to you about now is uh, we have a new transplant first initiative. And that's something that I think is going to increase access. So it's changing a vision. It's changing the way we're, we're talking about, now I'm, I'm only talking about kidney transplant, I'm talking about living donor kidney transplant. So getting a kidney transplant before you need dialysis. So before, before end stage renal failure hits and you're on dialysis, you get a living donor transplant in order to avoid dialysis and have the best possible outcome after your, um, for, for your kidney disease. And that is, the be that is the treatment of choice. And so that should be the treatment for all transplant eligible patients. So how are we going to do that? One, we're going to move, or what we have moved, the process of, of, of uh, candidate identification and education into the kidney care clinics across the province. So instead of talking about it when you're on dialysis, you talk about it when you're being managed for your chronic kidney disease and you get early education. You promote this as the treatment of, uh, is the best treatment and then it's one thing to say you should get a living donor transplant, but we have to help people to do it. So the old model was you have chronic kidney disease, you go to a kidney care clinic, your GFR is go, your kidney function is going down, you get orientated to your various options, you start dialysis, and then you talk about transplant. Our transplant first model is early. So when your GFR number, when the kidney number is 25, you begin a discussion, not about all of the various treatment options, but the, the option which is your best, which is a kidney transplant. So the, the kidney care clinics have a checklist of eligibility criteria. Anybody who's transplant eligible, the focus is get them a kidney transplant. They get orientated to this, they get referred, and hopefully they get transplanted when their GFRs are low enough. So we have a lot of people who are referred at the GFR 25. They come with a donor. We say, great, better to have your donor identified now. We work them up, and then when it's time comes, they can go right to transplant rather than have to go to dialysis. And so that's, that's been our focus, and, that, and that's our model. 
So how have we done this? Um, there's, there's a bunch of different ways. Uh, I, I won't go through great detail, but there's a, in the kidney care clinics, it's a provincial program through the, the, uh, the provincial renal agency, and uh, there's a care map. And so everybody with a GFR of 25 gets a checklist for their transplant eligibility. If they're transplant eligible, then they, begin, they get that education, orientation to transplant is their best option. BC Transplant and the kidney, BC Transplant works with the Provincial Renal Agency together in a partnership. Uh, we have a website where we've developed a lot of materials with videos, patient handouts, um, translated into various languages. Uh, you know, we, we have a, a large South Asian community as, as you do. Uh, fortunately, a number of our transplant nephrologists are South Asian and are uh, committed to uh, increasing access not only across the board, but particularly in the South Asian community. So Jag Gill, who I'm going to speak about, is also a, a pilot on our uh, on our indigenous uh, project, is uh, is speaking in Punjabi here to, uh, to a uh, in, in an educational video. Uh, we have a lot of other handouts. We've developed peer support, so we've worked with the Kidney Foundation to train uh, previous living donors who are available to travel across the province. We have, we have previous living donors in all of our uh, transplant centers who will go to a dialysis unit or go to even uh, to somebody's house to talk to them about, uh, about uh, their experiences as a living donor and provide some support for that. Um, we have, uh, as I said, the various websites. Uh, staff education was a big, it was a big issue. Um, we've done a number of surveys in, in, in our uh, kidney care clinics and the level of knowledge and the understanding about living donation and living donation as being the, the, uh, the best treatment was sort of lacking. And so we've done a, we've really done a push to get the education level, to get the training level in the kidney care clinics up to uh, what what we think is appropriate. And we've worked with those uh, those clinics with a lot, you know, with on-site visits, with uh, with webinars, with uh, with a, with a lot of training to try and get everybody comfortable with living donation and getting them on board with this living donor first uh, initiative. So these are just some of our brochures and handouts that we have. Um, we've had a coordinator, and so we've, this, was, this has been a key for us. So this coordinator uh, has been able, was a social worker who was uh, particularly skilled with, uh, with outreach, who has visited all the clinics, uh, the kidney care clinics across the province on a number of occasions, working with staff to try and get them comfortable with living donation and then uh, developing the algorithm, as I said, to talk about who does what when and make sure that we don't miss people. Um, and then uh, in terms of our research to document this. So uh, we have a provincial database called PROMISE and as patients move through the journey, we have some systematic ways of capturing this has been done, this has been done, this has been done so we can eventually uh, uh, report, uh, report it out. Um, just a, a, an aside, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the number of posters here and uh, I'm so jealous about it. I heard, uh, Sven, you have uh, 60, uh, 60 students in your, in your network uh, for, 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 uh, for this, this that, that's incredible. If anybody wants to come do a little uh, elective in BC, that would be nice. Uh, I think we have two, we have two students. Uh, so congratulations, it's, a, it's, a, it's great and uh, you know, it, the, the enthusiasm that we get from students and the, the, and the way to train them to, move, to think in a different way, I mean, it's, it's, that's what's going to move the needle. So, a living donor transplant offers the best opportunity for, our, uh, you know, you've heard this from everybody, for, for a long-lasting transplant. Ultimately, the goal is one kidney for life. Uh, the Transplant First Initiative is a patient-centered uh, uh, care is patient-centered care. It's based on best evidence, expert opinion, and it's in, based on engagement. Um, and uh, it's really involved and required the ongoing active engagement with the kidney care clinics, the regional staff, and the uh, and the the, the, the health care team across the board. And that, that that's been a you know a, a key for our 
success. When I'm talking about success, um, it's early, but uh, for the first time uh, in the last two years, we've had preemptive living donor transplants uh, performed now from every program, from every kidney care clinic across the province. And uh, last year, over 50% of our transplants were, were preemptive. So that means transplant, uh, getting, getting transplant before starting dialysis. So we are starting to move the needle. Um, now I'm just going to, in the last two minutes, I'm going to take tell you about uh, you know our experience uh, lo looking at some of the 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 the, um, the ethnicity uh, lack of access uh, in, in British Columbia and you know the, the the situation in British Columbia is very similar I think to the situation here um, it's very multi-ethnic um, this is the uh, the, the, the breakdown uh, by census uh, in 2016. Um, and uh, kidney disease seems to affect some, some populations in excess of others. And certainly in, in BC, the, the black, the, the South Asian, and the East Asian, and the indigenous community all have more renal disease. Despite that, their referrals are about on par with their makeup in the population. So that means already they're probably a little bit underserviced. Um, but once they get referred, their, trans their transplant rate is about the same as everybody else's. But as this van showed, same thing in BC. Living, do living donation really is something that happens for Caucasians. Uh, the, the, it, it's, it's just shocking the, the, the lack of, uh, of our ability to, to provide living donation to, a to our, our, our multi-ethnic population. And in particular, we're, we, we've focused on our indigenous population. And so there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, we've, you've talked about geography and uh, we've talked about, uh, about various issues for access, but you know, the more and more that I've been involved in this, uh, our lack of cultural awareness and our lack of ability to, to engage appropriately with our indigenous population it, 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 you know, is a huge reason, reason for our failure. And uh, we, we have to do better. We have to do better for all of our, our populations, but we're pretty, you know, we, we, we focus first on our Aboriginal program. And so we have now received a, a large grant from the CHR to develop a, a program and evaluate it, which we call Bridge to Transplant Initiative, which is a BC-wide program for Indigenous communities to gain equitable access to kidney transplantation. So the vision is that they will g gain equitable, you know, the, 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 we will move this, that, 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 uh, that they will be able to receive the best care, which is, the, which is a preemptive living donor transplant. And the overarching goal is to develop this for all, all of our ethnic communities. And we're going to do it by changing the way we deliver care. And as this fan said, again, it's not, the, the, it's engagement. It's working with the communities, not telling people what they need to do, not telling people what you have, you know, you guys got a problem. It's working with them to identify what solutions are going to work in their community. So this is a program which is going to go into, the, into those communities, work with our community partners, and develop strategies and, uh, and hopefully solutions which actually work for them, not telling them what we need, to, not telling those communities what we need to do. So it's going to be. I can't. I can't read my own slides. I need a cataract operation <laughs> uh, pretty soon. Uh, so, working with the communities to culturally tailor a, a, a program which is going to be able to support them, um, to help them, to help communities which are disparate to really, you know, understand that the, the you know, in terms, I like, you know, I like that slide about equity and equality. Um, people can't keep coming back to Vancouver five times. We have to be able to deliver this in a way that makes sense, and we need some cultural safety. And so one of the things we put in place for cultural safety is that uh, we have a very uh, intensive, and I did this thing, and it really changed the way I think, and you know, I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't think that way necessarily as much until I did this. We, we have a, uh, a 
one day online module uh, for uh, training us in uh, cultural safety for indigenous uh, populations and we've tailored that for our for our BC transplant staff and, they, and that, that's that, that's been really impactful so we have a number of components to our bridge in initiative but uh, but it, it really involves engagement and it, it involves cultural safety and it involves uh, some evaluation as well we have a bunch of partner organizations for this. Um, big team. And then listening, learning, and then hopefully some leading so that we can make a difference. Thank you.